So yesterday everything was seemingly like an ordinary day at work. I was chatting my now ex-girlfriend about some stuff and out of nowhere she sends me screenshots of messages. Thankfully FC King thankfully I saw them before she deleted them. She wrongfully sent me messages she had with a guy who she is asking for a commitment. At that point I was starting to have a panic attack in the office. I was holding back my anger and tears. I asked her WTF was that and asked why she was asking for a commitment did she get pregnant or something she says no and after that she had a Freudian slip and said I broke the relationship off on August 31st. I just exploded there. So many negative thoughts were flooding my head that I wanted to jump off from the 8th floor and just end it. I was shaking and felt really numb. It's been a day now and I haven't gotten out of bed. I don't know what to do. I have cut ties with her. She's been trying to call me and message me but I blocked her off. A part of me wants to confront her. A part of me wants revenge. I am clueless with what I want to do from here on. Update. I am very sorry if I wasn't able to reply to all of you. I didn't expect that I will get a lot of support from the subreddit. Thank you to all of you. I appreciate all of you. I mean it. I am fine. I haven't slept and have been in bed staring at the ceiling and letting my head wander off. I know this is bad but my body is so heavy that I can't move myself so that I could do anything positive. I didn't realize until now that she was texting me through my company phone. She got kicked out of her house. We were planning on moving out together last year after saving up a lot of money rent is expensive here and my salary can only go for so much while supporting my parents then the pandemic happened and the lockdown stopped those plans. I didn't know she didn't tell me firsthand but instead confided with the other guy. And that's where she was talking about committing with her like she got pregnant. Now that I think about it that's what she meant when she told me you should know about this so she mistook me for the other guy. I asked her parents why she got kicked out apparently she was going out even though we are on lockdown and they thought that she was with me. Surprise. Extra update. While I'm here wanting to blow my head off, she went on a trip. The trip that I wanted to go with her on this month. I peeked at her Instagram. I am so angry my head is racing with a lot of thoughts. I can't stop myself from wanting some closure. How do I return to my husband after a decade apart? Ten years ago, I left my husband. After being caught multiple times cheating on him, I was the one who left. Each time, my husband caught me cheating, and at was street times, he would cry and then always insist that he loved me and expressed concern for my soul. Looking back, I see that he was being selfless. He was shelving his own pain and focusing on keeping me from damning myself. Back then I saw him as being weak. I was a terrible person and not at all fit to be a wife or mother back then but for some reason that man loved me in spite of all my evils. At the end of our relationship I found myself believing I was in love with my latest affair partner and I divorced my husband and left the church. I became what you'd call a militant atheist and I urged my children to leave the church, abandon their faith, and live a worldly life. All the while, my husband never displayed his anger or frustrating which I'm sure he must have felt. Instead, each time I saw him, he greeted me with a smile and was genuinely interested in how I was doing. This only filled me with rage because I felt he was being passive-aggressive. My perception was my reality. I don't want to bore you all with our entire story, but the last ten years have been painful and enlightening. We had five children together. Recently, in speaking with our older children, my oldest daughter told me that her father has not dated anyone. I was shocked. I thought surely he would have moved on by now. And then she said something that felt like it slapped me awake. She said, I asked Dad why he hasn't dated, and he told me, because I'm a married man, I feel beside myself. I feel like I've awoken to a terrible reality that I myself created. I feel stuck in action. I want to go to him and tell him I'm sorry, but I don't know if I have the right. What should I do? I got revenge on my ex-girlfriend for cheating on me. This happened years ago when I was around 18 and dating a girl I had gone to high school with. We had been together for about a year and towards the last month of our relationship things started to die out. We wouldn't talk as much and she never had time for me. She claimed she was always working at her family's grocery store. Her family had their own business for years. It was a small grocery store that at one point while I was in between jobs I even worked at for a short time. Her family were lovely and me and her father got along great and still chat every now and then because I was always working or studying. Didn't party and had set goals for myself early in life which her father thought was awesome. So anyway, back to our relationship. Because we both worked we only had the weekends free so usually we would do our best to spend time with each other. But she had grown distant and I hadn't thought anything of it. But one weekend I receive a call from a friend of mine who tells me she had seen my girlfriend out with another guy. I didn't want to believe it, I was devastated. But I thought before I throw any accusations I would get my own proof first. It took me almost three weeks to convince her to spend time with me. When she agreed and came over for a night after work. I had planned on confronting her to find out for myself. She arrived shortly after dark and told me she was going to have a shower. She went into the bathroom but had left her phone with her bag and keys on the table. So I did what anyone who has been told they were being cheated on would do. 
I went through to see for myself. And what do you know? She was cheating on me with her ex-boyfriend who was a dirtbag. You see he was one of the kids at school that messed around, never came to school, was out smoking and drinking instead. I never really interacted with him outside of being asked for a lighter for a cigarette. But he was also selling drugs at school. I've always thought people who sell drugs to kids are dirtbags. Not cool at all bro. I found out she had been going to see him on the weekends to do drugs and drink as well as sleeping with him. There were messages talking about how I was too nice or focused on work too much. How she's only with me because her family loves me and I can handle that if you tell me that. Not cheat on me because of it I would rather leave a relationship freely. This hit me really hard and messed with my perception of women afterwards. I had never been cheated on before and didn't know how to handle the feeling. But I wasn't going to let her do me like that. Here comes the sweet revenge. You see in those messages they had been talking about needing money for alcohol or drugs and not having enough. This conversation led to him convincing her to steal it from her family business. She had been getting away with almost $800 or so every weekend as well as stealing items from their shop. So I thought fast, screenshot all the messages, and sent them to her father from her phone. I told him it was me, and that this is what I had found in his daughter's phone. Shortly after she had finished up in the shower, I told her we were finished and I knew everything. I told her to leave and I had a surprise for her when she got home to which she was confused about. She left after that and I received a call from her dad who was apologized to me for his daughter's actions and sounded almost as devastated as I was. He told me he had already called the police and they were waiting for her to get back home as well as collecting her ex-boyfriend as an accomplice. I was shocked but thankful that I had cut dead weight from my life in a just fashion considering she cheated on me. She got to spend the night in a cell with her ex and was ordered to pay back the amount by a judge and given community service. He on the other had happened to have previous warrants out and I don't know what happened to him after. I wiped my hands clean of her and moved forward. But man, that felt so much better that she at least got some punishment as a result. Me 22 male with my ex 23 female 8.5. We started dating in 8th grade. We went to high school and college together and dated the entire time. We graduated college this summer. After college she gets into grad school in our hometown six hours away from our college town and I have already accepted a job in our college town. We agree that I will move to our hometown and one year put in a work transfer so we can live together during her second and final year of grad school. She stays with her family for the summer before grad school starts this past June September and so during this time we are long distance. She becomes noticeably irritable and distant. She comes to visit me in our college town where I have been working after a couple months and says we should take a break while she goes to grad school. I fall apart crying and she changes her mind. A couple weeks later she starts texting me saying she doesn't feel like talking to me anymore and that she loves me but isn't in love with me. This is all through text message. I ask to call her and she allows me to a few hours later. I told her it would hurt me too much to ever speak to her again and that I forgive her and say a final goodbye. I fell apart of course. I miss work for a week. I'm completely unstable for over a month. I don't eat or sleep really at all. She makes no effort to contact me for 10 weeks. Then suddenly when I'm starting to heal and accept that she isn't the one for me etc. she begins contact. She tells me over Facebook not talking is too hard for her. I delete the message with no reply. She tries texting 4 days later and I block her number. 3 days after that she has her brother contact me. That's when she cracks. It is finals week in her first quarter of grad school and she drives 6 hours the night before her final to tell me she made a huge mistake. This occurred this Wednesday. I told her I don't believe her and that she needs more time to think about what she really wants and if it's me she wants. I told her I was skeptical and don't believe she loves me, pointing out that she said she wasn't in love with me. She doesn't remember saying that and claims that she has spent weeks thinking about it and regrets her decision. During our time apart she said she went on one terrible date and did not leave for another guy. However, I am scared that she is just lonely nostalgic and will leave me again when she gets bored. She tells me it's not nostalgia and she learned her lesson. I tell her to take a couple more months to think about it and decide if it's really me that she loves. I also tell her how hard the breakup was on me and proceed to condemn our eight and a half year relationship. I told her I had to demonize her and the relationship in order to move on. And laid out all the flaws. I then told her how great my life was becoming I now go to the gym every day. Have gotten new hobbies. And am way more social with friends. What do I do here guys? Thanks. My wife left me in the worst possible way. Don't know how to deal with life alone again. I'm 28. My life was lonely and depressing until I was 22. When I met my wife, I was a cynic but it was love at first sight in the most literal sense. We were meant to be together to use another cliché. I hate these phrases, but they're true. We lived together happily from soon after we met until about the two-year mark in our relationship. At which point she came off her antidepressants. Until then it was hard for me to imagine her being depressed. They were difficult for her to take, though, and so I supported her decision to come off them. For the next few years things were more challenging. 
She became very erratic, self-destructive, and more visibly depressed. She would start arguments constantly. I felt like I was her caregiver most of the time. However, if that all sounds bad, the good times made it all worthwhile. And while I had to take care of her a lot, she was a very strong person and looked after me when she was going through good days. I would say that while we didn't have a perfect relationship, it was closer to perfect than I've ever seen. Last year our cat died. That cat was the most solid rock in her life. It was always there for her, and we'd had it since just after we first met. She immediately lost her mind. She began cutting herself and burning herself and breaking things. This was a much more extreme version of what she was like on bad times in the previous years. She went away for two months to see friends and I supported this choice because she was obviously going through hell and I was struggling to cope. I thought getting away and seeing friends would be good for her. After two months she came back and acted normal for two days, and then told me that we were finished. It was all over. Needless to say, this was the biggest shock of my life. For our whole relationship she'd been paranoid about me suddenly leaving her. She'd made me promise over and over that if there was anything wrong, we'd work it out together. I thought that applied to both of us. After a week of begging for her to take me back, she reluctantly agreed, but told me that she'd been seeing someone else. Again, I was stunned. She had always maintained that cheating was the lowest a person could sink to a completely unforgivable crime. I told her I was sorry and that I'd do anything to take her back. I knew that she was just acting out of this self-destructive instinct. She told me that I was stealing her one chance to be happy. She told me that I'd have to change everything about myself in order to make our relationship work. This went on for a while. I did change everything about myself. I put my business up for sale and said I'd change every bit of my personality to match her ideals. She seemed content and dragged me along until one day she said she'd probably go back to him. It was about two months before I made the hardest decision of my life, and one that I regret to this day. I told her I'd had enough. I forgave her cheating, I tried to change my personality for her, and promised to spend the rest of my life devoted to making her happier and she was so bent on destroying herself and taking me down with her that it would never work. Over the next months I realized that I had just been frustrated and given up. But it was too late, she'd gone back to the other guy. They broke up after a month or so, and she moved back to her parents' house. But she won't consider getting back together with me. She tells me I'm the best man she's ever known and too good for her and things to that effect but there's nothing to be done. I've begged and pleaded. I know her too well. She's always been self-destructive and stubborn. We were meant to be together, but she fucked it up. I don't entirely blame her. I blame the man who weaseled his way into her life. He is, by all accounts, a predator. For six months I've been trying to move on with my life, but I have no idea how. And no desire to do so. I have nothing now. I lost my wife, my cats, my dog, my house, my business. My life savings, my physical and mental health. And any sense of self-respect, I didn't eat for four months and became anorexic. I've put most of the weight back on this past month, which is good. I've gotten over the suicidal thoughts, which were unbearably strong for months. I've made plans for my future. I've got a new job, but I have no real sense of purpose, no enthusiasm. I have nothing to live for and although I can delude myself for 15 minutes here or there into thinking of something, I really don't care. I'm just surviving. I don't want to spend the rest of my life alone. I was alone until I met her. No one ever looked twice at me. No one can stand to be around me. I'm also not really a people person, either. She was my soulmate. The idea that she moved on before even telling me that the relationship was over is soul-destroying. She also had people she loved before me, and now I feel like one in a line of boyfriends. But for me she was the one and only.